friends, it's Miss Grace here. I'm coming back at you with another week of videos. Today, we are going to be reading Zora's Zucchini. Now, I am a huge fan of zucchinis, and this week we will be making a fun zucchini-based recipe and a fun zucchini-based craft. So I hope you will come to love zucchinis as much as I do and as much as Zora does. So let's jump into the book. Zora's Zucchini. Written by Katherine Pryor, illustrated by Anna Raff. It was only the third day of summer vacation, but Zora was already out of ideas. Hmm. Zora rode her bike in large, lazy circles around the neighborhood, just like the day before and the day before that. When Zora rode by the hardware store, she noticed something new, a bunch of plants with fuzzy green leaves. Free zucchini, Zora read, Z, like me. She filled her basket with zucchini plants and headed home. Look what I found, Zora announced, zucchini. I'm gonna plant these in our garden. Zora dug big holes so the roots had room to grow. She settled the plants snugly in the soil. She watered each one. That's gonna be a lot of zucchini, said her father. We'll eat it, Zora promised. As June warm turned to July hot, Zora tended her garden. She watered the plants with their leaves got droopy. She cheered every time she saw a new yellow-orange zucchini blossom. One morning, Zora spotted her very first zucchini. She snapped it off the vine with a quick twist and raced to show her family. Zora's family found a new way to cook zucchini every day. Her brother made bread. Her sister made soup. Her parents marinated and grated and barbecued. Zora's garden grew. They ate zucchini for breakfast, for lunch, and for dinner. More, Zora offered. By the first day of August, Zora's garden was a jungle of prickly, tickly, bushy, blossomy plants. Every single one of those plants was covered in zucchini. There was no way her family could eat all of it. Zora peered into her neighbor's garden. It was full of tomatoes, but no zucchini. Hi, Mr. Thompson. Would you like to trade some tomatoes for some zucchini? Zora asked. Absolutely, Mr. Thompson replied. Zora swapped an armful of zucchinis for an armful of tomatoes. Zora's zucchini kept growing. This is nuts she said. She loaded up her bike and gave away every last one. The next day, Zora found even more zucchini. Seriously, she said. Zora thought and thought, and then she had an idea. But she knew she couldn't do it alone. Her brother painted the signs, her parents printed the flyers, Zora and her sister posted them all over the neighborhood. On Saturday, Zora's garden swap was open for business. Her sign says, take a veggie, leave a veggie. Or at least please take some zucchini. Zora straightened her sign. She checked the time. The sun got hotter. Zora's feet got fidgetier and she began to worry that her garden swap was going to be a garden flop. Then Zora saw Miss Rivera carrying a big bowl of raspberries and Mr. Peterson bringing potatoes. Neighbors stopped by with carrots, peppers, and green beans from their gardens. They shared plums, apricots, and cherries from their trees. People left whatever they had too much of and traded for whatever they wanted. Zora traded and traded until all of her zucchini was gone. 
Zora looked around at the busy, noisy jumble of munching, laughing, chatting neighbors. Her zucchini garden had brought so many people together. She was already plotting what to grow next summer. The end. Thanks for reading this book with me, everybody. I hope that you tune into our next videos where we do a zucchini activity and a zucchini recipe so we can make some of that zucchini bread that Zora's brother made earlier in the book. I'll see you there.